it's less than 10 hours since the last training session, uh, 4.30 in the morning right now. Uh, what do you do? Well, you go. Uh, nothing else to, to, you know, to do about it. You just got to put in some sort of work. So like always, man, I come in here and I just warm up. Uh, warm up and see how you feel. There's no point, you know, pre-conceiving, you know, how you're going to go or, you know, what the training session is going to look like. You have no idea, man. So you come in, you warm up. And you see what's possible. Uh, decided to move the squat rack outside today. Just I don't know what it is about uh, the the garage. It just felt really dusty. I haven't vacuumed in a while. There's basically no point vacuuming anyway because there's just so many surface area. You know, so many surfaces. You know, you can't freaking keep a garage clean anyway. So now that I'm doing all these high reps and breathing like a maniac in here, I thought it's probably not the best idea to be cooped up in in a dusty shed. So I, you know, took the portables outside and. You know, a bit of a breeze, so it's kind of nice uh, to squat outside. But I warmed up, you know, three three lots with the bar, three lots with 60, three lots with 100. Then I uh, went 140, 160, 180 singles. And then I thought, okay, uh, pretty stiff, pretty tired. Uh, body's not going to let go into the positions that I really want to. And what was making matters even more worse is the, the concrete outside the garage is not even. Uh, so if I face towards the shed, uh, I feel like I've got the anti all these shoes kind of set up going uh, the, i'm kind of squatting uphill <laughs> so the ankles get even less range of motion so what that looks like is more leaning over um so you know not the most optimal even the the concrete in the garage is wobbly everywhere so it's not it's not the greatest you know for squatting but anyway i try to rotate back and forth as much as i could um and i just put in the, the work i you know, I thought I could uh, for the morning, uh, but it's really interesting how the body responds. Not only is the training session only 10 hours after the last training session, but uh, it's 4.30 in the morning and so I'm feeling pretty stiff as it is. Uh, and then I thought to myself, okay, how do I, you know, I got up to 180 and on the way down I thought, do I hit 100 for another 20? Uh, that wasn't a good idea. I decided not to do that because it's just way too much. Way too much, way too close together with workouts. Yesterday I did 140 for 10 and uh, 100 for 20. Uh, I mean, I'm feeling it. You know, I, uh, this is the thing about metabolic type of training sessions is that, I don't know, I feel like I want to say you get more tight because there's metabolic stress and there's all lactic acid and all this sort of stuff. You know, within the tissue, it's kind of locking you up. So I, I stretched a little bit before this training session. I didn't show that, but I stretched a little bit, tried to let go of the posterior chain. Uh, it's really interesting when I, when I go after my posterior chain and stretch when I'm really tight and I start squatting immediately after, I feel my lower back. Not in the sense of like pain, but I feel like it's getting a pump. Uh, it's really interesting. I've noticed that, you know, a fair few times now uh, when I stretch the posterior chain before training sessions, you know, and those training sessions are usually the, the training sessions that I'm feeling stiff, I end up having a lower back pump. It's almost like, it's almost like I deactivate the hamstrings in a way from stretching. And then when I go into these you know, deep hip uh, positions, I feel like my, my lower back has to take over or something. I, I'm not entirely sure what goes on there, but uh, the moment I kind of come in and I feel like I'm stiff, I know I'm not going to have a really good training session because uh, I'm going to have to stretch to get into those positions. And the moment I stretch much, you know, as much as I did this morning, uh, I just, I'm weak. And I think there's research out there to show not to stretch before uh, you know, lifting weights before strength training uh, does something to the muscle or whatever. I don't know. Um, I've heard people say that it cools the muscle down, which is kind of counterintuitive what you need to do. You know, you got to warm the muscle up, not cool it down. Um, I'm talking about static stretching. I guess if you do dynamic stretching and you do all that sort of stuff, it's kind of better for it. Uh, but for me, I, I feel like I don't know, you know, one, one of you fellas asked about static stretching the other day in, in the comments, and I said, I'm, I'm pro static stretching. Ideally, you want to do PNF stretching, uh, you know, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation basically means you're contracting the muscle which you're stretching. So you kind of go through a contraction while you're static, statically stretching the muscle. Um, that's kind of like, you know, the gold standard, I think, when it comes to that. But it's kind of hard to set up sometimes. Um, it's kind of really hard. So... The, the exercises which you could do for hamstrings is kind of like good mornings, RDLs, where you explore that stretch. Obviously, you're doing, you know, lightweight. You don't want to load up freaking 80%. But, you know, you, you explore a stretch 
um, and then you kind of contract the, the hamstring or, you know, flex the hips um, or extend the hips rather out of that position. That's kind of the best way to go about it. This is why, you know, I spoke about it yesterday about, you know, doing a lot of squatting, um, especially with high reps. It kind of tends to lock you up and every time I incorporate some sort of good morning or RDL or deadlift, I feel like it's... If it doesn't do anything, it stretches the posterior chain in some sort of weird way. It keeps my hips balanced. Not to say that I'm, I'm feeling kind of crappy this morning uh, and I'm in pain or whatever. It's not that case. Uh, but there's tightening. You know, and when you look at the Olympic weightlifters, some of the guys I look up to, man, Jesus, man, they're like gymnasts. Some of these guys are gymnasts, I'm telling you, man. They're so freaking flexible, man. I don't know too many guys at the top uh, who are stiff. You know, uh, this is kind of something that I've noticed and I've heard people talk about it over the years. It's really interesting how, you know, weak people are stiff people. You know, I don't know if you've noticed that, you know, really weak people, people that are starting out, people that are maybe not even just starting out intermediate level, but they're really stiff, that tend to be not that strong. But these advanced guys, and or the guys that we look up to, uh, they tend to be really supple, you know, really long and strong. This is something that I've kind of said to you guys on and off. You know, a short muscle is a weak muscle. You know, uh, it's not the case 100% of the time, but it's a good mentality to have. A short muscle is a weak muscle. A long muscle is a strong muscle. And the idea behind saying that is that this fascia network that we're all kind of like engulfed by uh, tightens up to protect weak structures. Because if it didn't do that, you would run the risk of tearing. Uh, just imagine a rubber band that's really thin and long. It can snap. So what, what does the body do? It kind of wraps it up in this kind of glad wrap, um, in this foil to protect it from stretching. Uh, it, it's only physics, right? Uh, so if a muscle is long and strong, if you've got heaps of length in your posterior chain, you know, glutes, hamstrings, adductors, those structures are probably healthy. Uh, but when we're doing these high rep, uh, high repetition sets, uh, what happens to these muscles? Well, we damage them, right? We... we we take them to the max, we deplete them, we need to repair them. And what the body responds, um, what, what the body does in response to that is to lock it down. Lock it down while there's construction work going on, man. Lock it down while we, you know, repair the damage. Um, you can't be open up for business and, you know, put up scaffolding and freaking start painting and drilling walls while the customers are going by. You just drop something in the head. So it's kind of like that. Lock up shop and, and go from there. Um, the, the funny thing about recovery, though, is, and, and this is where I believe it. I know a lot of people don't believe it. Uh, but anyway, that's very, very long topic to talk about. But I will mention this, is that I feel recovery is improved when there's better circulation. Uh, you know, so you can go through a training session without further damage, without further damaging, uh, and just getting blood circulation, you know, getting blood in there, getting circulation in there. Because... If you think about it, you know, we don't repair through freaking diffusion of oxygen into the muscles, right? It doesn't work like that. You know, you don't just absorb nutrients through the skin, through the atmosphere. You breathe, you eat, and the blood is like a road network that takes stuff to it. Now, if you think about it, if you have more blood supply, if you have more circulation to a given area that's, uh, you know, that needs repairing, it promotes healing. Right. This is why icing injuries, maybe three days, two days after the, 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 the insult, makes no sense because you are prolonging recovery. You are prolonging recovery because you are freezing that area. And what happens when you put cold treatment onto a, onto a damaged area? You vasoconstrict, meaning you are tightening those vessels, those blood vessels around that area because it's cold. Right. That's what happens. And with constriction, what do you get? Less blood flow. So what you want, in fact, is you want dilation of those blood vessels, meaning that you want those vessels to release and become bigger, right? What does a bigger road get? More traffic, right? More opportunity for blood to get there. Nutrients come out uh, or nutrients come in, waste comes out, and you kind of uh, impact recovery in that way. This is why I believe after so many days, I don't have any pains in the knees, in the ankles, in the back, because I'm continuously washing these structures with blood. I'm giving these structures an opportunity to repair. You know, even though, you know, 10 hours after the training session, last training is probably not enough, um, I auto-regulated and I was like, okay, let's, let's not do anything stupid. So I didn't do 140 for 
10. I didn't do 100 for, for 20. I didn't, you know, I just, I just went for a stroll. I went for a stroll in the sake of circulation. That's what I did. Um, and, you know, there's also other benefits to what I do. You know, I've spoken about all this stuff before, but since I'm kind of talking about it, I'll mention there's also a psychological component to this. There's also a spiritual component to this. Uh, there's also just a routine. There's also just, there's more things going on in life than just numbers on a piece of paper. Right now, I feel awake. I feel fresh. I feel like I've done an exercise, which I have. I want to go to work now and feel woken up and my body's, you know, this process is happening. I've, I've been circulating blood and nutrition around and I just feel better. I feel better mentally. It's a distress. So it's, I'm just a happy human being when I do this in the morning, even though a lot of people like, isn't there more value in sleeping another hour and a half? I don't think so. You know, we're all different. We don't have to argue about it and split skulls over it. Um, you do you, I do me, but you know, I'm happy. <laughs> this is not, I'm, I don't have a gun to my head, man. This is, I'm doing this. And you can pull up research studies from 1692 and 1553. And the, the smartest man in the world has written a piece of paper that says this is wrong. That's good for him, man. I'm living my life. I'm not living his life. So my anecdote is that this shit is, is awesome. Uh, it helps me on many, many aspects. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I just, for people that are listening to this and saying you're an idiot for doing this, I just say, just try, dude. Just try, get up in the morning, have a mentality of just moving your blood around the body, and I reckon you'll feel better. I reckon you'll feel better. Thank you to everyone on the Patreon list, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, appreciate you guys. Well, let me get back in the house, shower, and get, get to work. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.